I'm calling this series of videos in media res because we're starting in the middle. We're not going to go through how to set up the game and all the different terms and components that are used. We're just going to start playing. And then as certain rules come up, we'll address them then, just like a flashback in a detective novel. Um, for the first video, I've chosen to play Israeli Air Force Leader, which is my favorite Dan Version game and one of my overall favorite historical um, games. I like the theme of the Arab-Israeli conflicts in my war games. Now this is a mission from the Six Day War campaign, one of several that come with the game. This will be the second mission on the first day of the campaign. And I'm just going to record it and let the dice fall where they may, explain things as we go along, and then after the video I'll likely have some thoughts on what was happening. Let's watch. So flying a mission in Israeli Air Force Leader is pretty straightforward. There is a sequence of play listed right here on the right hand side of the board and the first step is to draw a target. We've already drawn this target, these tanks, because they were a secondary target. We started the mission day drawing two cards. Our first mission was a failure. We came close to destroying a military base, but in the end we fell three points short of damage. So now we're going to fly this secondary target, which we had decided. You have to decide if you're going to fly a secondary when you choose your primary as well. We had already decided to fly this target. Now the next step is to determine and place the sights for the target. And these are going to be your hard positions, your machine guns, your anti-aircraft weaponry. And according to the card, we're going to draw one sight for each approach vector. We have an SA-2 in the north approach that has a range of two and shoots at you if you're at high altitude. We are going to draw a ZSU-57-2 for the east approach. It has a range of one and shoots at you if you're low altitude. Another SA-2 for the south approach. And then finally for the east approach, we draw no sight. Guess which direction we're coming from. Now for, and then we're also going to draw for the center of the site, uh, the target, and we draw another ZSU-57-2. Now for sites in the approach areas, you also draw a directional counter for each one if it has a range greater than zero, which all of them do. And that just shows you what direction these sites can attack toward and be attacked from. So whatever is red there, <clears throat> that's the areas that it can fire toward. So it can fire here, 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 and here. Now for the east approach, we're going to draw another one. And some of these are really limiting, like this one limits to these three zones plus that one. And some of them are just all red and it can shoot any direction it wants to. We got lucky there. So we're going to be able to approach from the east without worrying about those external sights, which is good. We'll get rid of that no sight counter. <clears throat> now the next step is to assign the pilots. Well, I've already assigned the pilots also because when you pick a secondary mission, you assign pilots for that mission at the same time you assign them for the primary mission. So our pilots on this mission are Bucket. He's flying a Magister. He's a newbie pilot, so his stats aren't great, though he does have a plus one air to ground if he's not shaken. He is carrying a Mark 82 iron bomb with a weight of one, which is all he can carry. The other pilot is Fig, and he is flying an A4 Skyhawk. Now his stats are a lot better. He's plus one air to ground. He's got a higher stress threshold, but more importantly, He's fast, which means he attacks before sights and bandits do. He also has a couple of skills. He has an overwatch skill. And what that does is once per mission, he can <clears throat> attack a bandit when it moves into range. And we'll see that in action. And then he has the cocky skill, which says that if he's the first pilot on the mission to destroy a sight or bandit, then he gets plus one experience points. Well, he has the fast skill and he has an overwatch skill, so the chances are pretty good he'll be the first pilot to destroy a cider bandit on the mission. Now, he's armed with a Mark 84 iron bomb, which weighs three, and he has a Mark 83 iron bomb with a weight of two. Now, each of those bombs has a potential to do three damage compared to the Mark 82, which only does two. 
So that takes care of steps four and five of the pre-flight phase, and those are the last two steps. Now the next phase is the target bound flight, and the first thing you do there is you draw a target bound event card from the event deck. Okay, so this card is a target of opportunity, and we look at that top area of the card there for target bound. If we were over target, we look in the middle. If we were home bound, we would look at the bottom. So target of opportunity, it says we can discard three weight points of air to ground counters to gain one victory point. Now I'm already at a deficit today. I still have zero victory points and have flown one mission. And these tanks are only worth one victory point. So I'm going to go ahead and discard the Mark 84 iron bomb to get a guaranteed victory point. So worst case scenario, we're coming out even from where we were had we completed this mission. And we still have enough ordnance left to do five potential damage just with bombs. And of course we can always attack with our guns too in subsequent phases if our bombs don't destroy the target. Alright, so the next step of the target bound flight is to place our aircraft and choose their altitudes. Well, we're going to be coming in from the east. That is a no-brainer here for me. And we're going to come in high. And the reason I want to come in high is because when we're in this west approach, this anti-aircraft gun over here is going to be able to target us if we're at low. This way, we can switch to low altitude when we get to the center area and only have to worry about thin. Ideally, we're not going to be spending a whole lot of time over the center area. We're going to fly in, drop our bombs, destroy the tanks, and go. So, step eight of the entire sequence, uh, it'll be the third step of the target bound flight, is to place bandits. So we draw bandit counters. It's the same counter as the side counter. It's just which side you draw, which side you use. So we have a MiG-21 in the north approach. We have a no bandit in the east approach. We have a MiG-19 in the south approach and then we have a MiG-19 in the west approach. Now I always place my counters uh, starting in the north and going clockwise so if I'd have gone the other way I'd have had no bandit either in the west approach but it didn't work out that way. So he's done. That's that step. Um, the next step is the Intel um, air defense adjustment and that's how many sites or bandits you can de remove determined on the progress in your campaign so far. Right now we don't get to remove any. Then we're going to draw our over target event cards. So we're going to go to the same event deck and this time we're going to look at the middle card. This says weapon restock. Sites and bandits suffer minus one on attack rolls against low aircraft that are over the target. Well, we're going to be at low altitude over the target. And that's going to mean that those sites is, are going to be at minus one to hit us. And if there's any bandits still at that point, they'll be minus one to hit us as well. All right, the final step is to place the turn marker in turn one. And now we're ready to go. So over the target, we have a phase we're going to repeat five times this sequence. It's got six steps in it. Our fast pilots will attack, and then sights and bandits will attack, then slow pilots attack, and then our aircraft move and adjust altitude, the bandits move, and then we adjust the turn counter. So for this first turn, there's nobody in attack range of each other. So I'm just going to move my planes here. So that's my movement step, and then the bandits move. And this bandit's coming here, and this bandit's coming here, because they move toward the closest enemy aircraft, which is us. And that's going to end that entire turn. And then we advance the turn counter to turn two. Now for this next turn, we're gonna have some combat. And actually, I'm gonna go back as soon as this MiG-19 moves into range, I'm going to use my Overwatch skill, and Fig is going to attack it. Now, Fig has a plus one air to ground, but a minus one air to air. However, you can see that that MiG counter 
has a plus three. So I'm plus three to hit that MIG with any plane and then minus one for fig. So I'm a plus two to hit that plane. Now I need a 10 to hit with my guns, but I, so I now need an eight or better. Um, a four is not gonna cut it. So that MIG is still good. And then this MIG will move in as well. <clears throat> now, the next step is the fast pilot's attack. Well, Fig took that attack out of turn to his Overwatch skill. He actually has uh, a fast rating. So he is again going to attack that MiG-19. Actually, I'm going to attack this MiG-21 up here because it is better equipped at taking out my planes. It would stress them on a 4, destroy them on a 9. So Fig is going to take a shot at the MiG-19. He's going to be plus 1. A 4 is not going to cut it. So now each of those MiGs is going to take a crack at my guys. And I'm going to randomly determine. I'll say Bucket is odd and Fig is even on the die roll. So the MiG-21 is going to attack Fig. Um, Fig is... Um, well, he can't suppress because he's the one being attacked. Now, during an attack, any of your pilots can attempt to suppress the attacker. Now, Bucket would be our suppressor here, but he's minus three air to air. That MiG is plus two to hit, but he's still minus one, so he can't get a 10 with his cannons in an air to air attack. So instead, Fig is going to evade and when you evade, you take two stress, and then you roll two dice for the attack, taking the lowest result. Now that MIG will stress FIG on a four. On a seven, he'll damage FIG, and when you're damaged, what happens is you take two stress, and you have to discard your ordnance, or ECM pods, or fuel tanks, or anything else you're carrying, you lose those things if you're damaged. Then if you're damaged again, you're destroyed. And on a 9 or better, that MiG-21 is going to flat out destroy MiG, uh, FIG. So I'm going to roll the die for the first attack, hoping for low. That's a 1. I don't need to reroll, but it says roll twice, so I'm going to. <clears throat> so that 1 means the MiG-21 missed its attack on FIG. Now the MiG-19 there in the middle is going to attack FIG again, which means there's no suppression going on. But that's okay. Fig can handle the stress. He has a rating of six. Um, so two more would give him a four for stress from evading. And so that MIG is going to roll twice. Now it needs a five to stress him. So that got a six and it's going to roll again there. It gets a three so it misses as well. This last MIG is hopefully going to attack Bucket. So he can be suppressed. That's an odd number, so he will attack Bucket. Now Fig is going to try to suppress that MiG-19. He's going to roll and add 2 to the roll. 2 and 8 is 10. So that MiG is suppressed, and it doesn't get to attack Bucket. He was distracted by his wingman, which is one of the reasons he's there. Now, now is the slow pilot's attack phase. Unfortunately, Bucket has that minus three. So he's going to attack one of the MiG-19s because they're plus three to hit. So if I roll a 10, Bucket will destroy one of those MiG-19s. A three plus three is six. No MiG-19s were destroyed. Now the next phase is again for our pilots to move. So they're going to move in there against the target. And then when that happens, the planes are going to follow, of course. And then we move the turn counter to turn three. Now here's where it gets interesting. I have this sight. Oh, I'm also going to switch my altitude to low. I do that when I move my planes. I have to be at low to use these bombs. And I have to be at low altitude to attack that sight. Now Fig is fast. And I can either attack the sight to keep it from shooting at us. I can attack one of the MiGs. Or I can try to put that Mark 83 iron bomb on this target, potentially doing up to three damage to it. 
And I actually think that's what I'm going to do. I want to damage that target as much as possible, as fast as possible. So with the Mark 83 Iron Bomb, on a 5, I do 1 damage. On a 7, I'll do 2. And on a 10, I'll do 3 damage to the target. Fig is plus 1 to his um, air to ground attack. So in actuality, I need a 4, 6, or 9 to do those damages. Roll the die. Hope for a high number. That's a cocked die. A 9 will do 3 damage. So far, so good. Now, all the sites and bandits are going to attack. The um, anti-aircraft emplacement, I'll let it attack first. It's going to attack Bucket. Fig can suppress that with his guns. He's going to try. He needs better than that. He needed a 10. Actually, he wouldn't have been able to suppress it. So that site is going to attack Bucket. Bucket is going to evade. Actually, Bucket's not going to evade because his stress factor, if he takes one more stress, then he's going to be um, shaken, which will negatively affect his ability to hit with his bombs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my chances. Now, a four will give him one stress. Anywhere between a four or five will give him one stress. Uh, zero to three, he'll take nothing. So 50-50, he's going to take just one stress. So I'm going to take my chances. And, of course, I rolled a nine. And an eight will take Bucket out. So Bucket is removed. Hopefully, we'll get him back on a search and rescue. This has not been the best outing. Now, the MiG-21s are all going to attack um, Fig. So, the MiG-21 uh, needs a 4 to hit him. He can't suppress for himself. Right now, he's at 5 stress. Um, 2 more evading stress will take him to Shaken. And that'll make him incapable of finishing the mission. So we're just going to have to take our chances and roll low. We did. Look at that. A 3. So the MiG-21 does not hit him. The MiG-19 gets to take a crack. It needs a 5 to stress him. One more stress is okay. So again, we're going to hope that we roll a 7 or less. We got a 7 straight up. So that he is now at 6 stress. He's still okay. The MiG-19, again, has the same stats, so it needs a 7 or less, a 5, 6, or 7 to stress him. Um, 1 through 4, nothing happens. A 9 is going to damage him. And that's okay. That'll give him 2 stress, which puts him at 8. He'd have to drop his ordnance if he had any. He doesn't have any. So he survives and gets to go into turn 4. So going into this turn, Fig is the fast pilot. He can attack the counter, or he can attack the target. He has 8 stress, so he's minus 2 on his attack roll, which means what should have happened is he should have left the target during the move step, which is what he'll do. Um, and that's what happens to Fig. And the aircraft move and adjust altitude step, which takes place after the slow pilot's attack step, you can exit the tactical display. That would be the thing to do, would be to exit the tactical display at this point. Because he can't get the target at this point, because he cannot roll a 10 with his cannons. Fortunately, we did get the one victory point from the opportunity. If we play this out, let's go ahead and play it out to see how it goes. That first, the site is going to attack him. He can evade. And let's say he evades. The site gets a 6. That would damage him. Or a 2. So nothing happens. He evades. But he's now at 10 stress. 2 more stress and he's going to be unfit. Um, the MiG-21 
can attack him. Actually, he could have attacked any of the MiGs. So let's go and attack the MiG-19 to see how he does. He misses because that's plus three minus two is a six. So the MiG-21 will attack him. It'll miss. The MiG-19 will attack him. Also a miss. And then that last MiG-19 attacks and gets a two on its roll. So now, slow pilot's attack. My slow pilot has already been destroyed. And then, in the move step, I can exit the tactical display at any point. Kick in the afterburners, get out of there, go home. Now, we have to do the homebound flight. And the next part of that is to draw another event card. This time, we're going to look at that bottom row. This says to roll an attack against two random aircraft on a 1 to 8. Stress 1 plus. On a 9 plus, the aircraft is damaged. So I've only got one aircraft left, so I'm going to roll an attack against that aircraft and see if he makes it home. That's a 9. So that last event has actually caused me to lose that second pilot. That is horrible. So now we're going to go into the search and rescue phase. So the first, for the search and rescue phase for each pilot, we're going to roll a die to see how they fare. Because right now they're just missing in action. Um, they've just been shot down. We're going to send it out our teams to look for them. Now we're going to make a die roll. Again, on a 9+, plus, we get a quick recovery of the pilot. Um, on a 6-8, to eight, the pilot is recovered under fire. And they suffer 5 stress in addition to any mission stress they suffered. And on a 5 or less, they're missing in action. They become unfit for the rest of the campaign unless there's an event that somehow rescues a downed pilot. So, we need to check for bucket. There are some modifiers. I can add one to the roll if I wanted to discard um, air to ground counters um, for, for planes who are still flying the mission. There aren't any still flying the mission. I get to add two to the roll if he was shot down during the target bound phase. Or one if you were shot down during the homebound phase. So we are going to roll one for Fig. Bucket, we're just going to roll the die and hope for the best. We get an eight. So he's recovered, but he suffers five more stress in the process. Good news, though, because I've already lost one pilot in this campaign. Now we're going to roll again for Fig. Now for Fig, we get a plus one because he was shot down during the homebound phase. Roll that die. I get a 3 plus 4, or plus 1 is 4. Fig is lost. Fig is missing in action. And he was one of my better pilots. That just goes to show. Um, you never can tell. That's a This is a tough campaign anyway. Um, that's a hard event to have drawn. It's an unlucky event. Um, but it was just bad dice rolls and bad decisions, I guess, on my part. Um, I should have hung on to that other weapons counter, dropped them both going in, and maybe gotten that target. Then we'd get to XP. We do still get the one victory point for that event card. So right now, after day one of the six-day war campaign, we have one victory point. And we're down two pilots. We lost a rookie green newbie pilot. I think it was a green pilot on the first mission. But there you go. That's a turn of Israeli Air Force leader. They don't always go that poorly. I could you know, scrap this one and show you a turn you know, play one out until I, you know, have a better turn and you can see how the game plays. But I still think that shows how the game plays. There were plenty of opportunities for it to go the other way for me. That's just the breaks. And who wants to play a game that can't beat them? Well, that's obviously not how I expected that mission to go. I assigned Fig to the campaign or to that mission thinking that he alone could handle it. And then was letting Bucket fly along just so he'd get the experience. I had pretty bad luck on the draw for the Sides and Bandits. Normally, uh, there's not quite so many in play. There are more no side and no bandit counters in the bag. They just didn't come up. And the dice rolls just weren't in my favor. Now, from a historical perspective, that's about the way it went on the first day or two of the um, Six-Day War. The Israeli Air Force had not encountered the ground-to-air weaponry and assets that the Egyptians were using in that campaign, and they really had to make a shift to uh, eventually gain their air superiority. Um, I still got the one experience point, or the one victory point for the game, which hopefully will stack on top of all the others. I still need 19 more to get a great result, 
and I've got five more days, so at least five more missions. Um, I'll let you know how it goes. Thanks for watching. If there's anything you'd like to see covered, any questions about the game, or any other games that maybe you'd like to see played like that, um, let me know in the comments down below, and we'll see you next time.